let's start off with that story around the electoral amendment bill and the interreligious groups have thrown their weight behind amending the electoral laws to provide for manual voter identification and transmission of results in the event of failure of technology. The religious leaders said it was important to provide for an alternative method to avoid disenfranchising voters. They were addressing the media earlier today. Bearing in mind that it's our election year, our stand is that Kenyans shall be allowed to elect their leaders in a free, fair and democratic atmosphere devoid of any acrimony, where the majority shall be allowed to have their way as the minority shall have their, 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 their say as well. On the political arena, we wish to observe and state that the acrimony that emanated from the voting in Parliament two weeks ago, where the electoral laws were changed to allow the simultaneous usage of both manual and electronic voting registers in a case of signal failure wasn't informed from the truth and the reality. The truth is that all technological uh, gadgets fail one time or another and therefore the idea of having a standby alternative would always be a wise decision. So as to be fair to every voter by not denying them a chance to elect leaders of their own choice. We believe in the rule of law and parliamentary democracy as enshrined in a, our state, uh, statutes, including parliamentary standing orders and the constitution. Parliament therefore acted in its wisdom to amend the electoral law to provide for manual register usage in a case the BVR fails. Well, for more details on this, our reporter Murimi Mwangi has the latest regarding this particular developing story. Well, there is now before uh, the Senate Legal Committee. Their position is that the Senate ought to adopt the amendments from the National Assembly as recently passed. But let's hear more from the chair of the Interfaith Council, uh, Archbishop Jerry Kibarabara. When you say that you want the Senate to uh, fully adopt what was passed at the National Assembly and you taking a political stand. First of all, uh, I want to tell uh, the fact that uh, we are speaking on behalf of, of the citizens of this country who may not be holding office, who may not be having um, technical uh, know-how or many things. All what we are saying, we are not supporting anyone. What we are saying is that uh, the Mwananchi Wakawainda all Mwananchi needs is to be allowed to vote, cast their votes in the atmosphere of peace. Those other inner details, technicalities, they can be dealt with. That's why we have the parliament. But back in 2007, the church was accused of taking a political stand, yes. and that in a way was uh, said to have precipitated what happened in 2007. And we're having a repeat of a situation where the church is taking a political stand, which in essence means uh, you seem to support one side of the political conversation. No, because from our entire membership, we are across the political parties and opinions. And we support our members across the country, the evangelical Pentecostals, there are many, plus Mwananchi from different organizations, and we are all, we ourselves are faith-based. Ourselves, we are not supporting any side. What we want is to be learned in that peaceful 
direction. If our leaders, both government and the politicians, have issues, talk to them, let them discuss these issues without acrimony, which the Mwananchi is being told that if this is not done, this will happen. What we are saying, there must be a backup. It's natural. In my own house, I live in Nairobi, and there is one area of my house where I cannot receive any calls. The same house, actually one feet from the other. Now, what about the election day? What about casting my vote when you wake up at 4 a.m. to go and queue for voting and you are told maybe there's no power, machines broke down, do you go home? What do you do? That's what we're saying. Naturally, there has to be a backup. And a backup, if it's manual, if it is whatever they can design, there has to be a, a, a backup because machines fail. Power failure in Kenya is known. Uh, like uh, so many people are not able even to have water because of failure of power within the borehole. Perhaps my very final uh, question, Archbishop. Another section. Well, many thanks to Murimi Mwangi for that incisive interview around the election amendment bill. Of course, um, Senate is set to hold uh, sittings come the 4th of January. And of course, we'll continue keeping our eyes on how that story develops. Let's shift gears to Mombasa County now. And Mombasa Senator Hassan Omar is now claiming that the county government has been defrauded of up to 1 billion shillings through garbage collection. Omar, who is also eyeing the gubernatorial seat currently held by Ali Hassan Joho, alleged that the company carrying out the garbage collection was single sourced. He now wants a thorough probe conducted and action taken against culprits irregularly allocated the contract for the collection of garbage through single sourcing in contravention of the Public Procurement and Assets Disposal Act 2015 to a company whose directors are believed to be close associations or confidants of the county governor. Two, that the said company has irregularly paid a sum of Kenya shillings 300 million annually for garbage collection. In fact, the other figures put it at 42 million a month, which will take the sum way above uh, the 30, uh, 30, 300 million. But I quote this sum because this is the sum, the award sum, that is further supported by the Auditor General's report for the year ended 30 June 2015. Thirdly, that it cannot be demonstrated as to how the annual payment of the sum of Kenya shillings 300 million was arrived at as payment to the said company as the procedure for procurement for such services was not followed. Indeed, interesting developments, and let's still keep on top of that story. We now cross live to our reporter, Francis Ontomoa. Good afternoon, Ontomoa. Um, these allegations, um, are they coming on the back of an increasing concern around counties on how they continue to manage finances? From where you are, Ontomoa, what has the county government had to say regarding these particular allegations? Uh, well, uh, good afternoon, Abi, again, and Happy New Year to you. And indeed, yes, it's the second day of uh, the new year and already we're having a huge discussion here regarding garbage collection. And I'm, I'm actually standing uh, behind the Marikiti market and just behind me you can see the heaps of garbage uh, that is, of course, lumped uh, behind me. And this is the discussion that the Senate of Mombasa has decided to really bring on the limelight and discuss a few things here and there. Uh, basically, the Senate of Mombasa claims that uh, the, 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 the county government of Mombasa has defrauded residents who are close to a billion shillings on, in garbage collection and is actually citing that every year there is a company that was single sourced, that is according to him, was single sourced and has been, being, uh, and it has actually been 
paid 300 million every year uh, in, to be able to collect garbage in the city of Mombasa. And that is the discussion uh, that, uh, of course, uh, has started to circulate here in Mombasa and many are talking about it. Uh, well, at this juncture, some of these issues that the senator is raising are actually contained in the Auditor General's report of 2015. And, of course, uh, some of these things uh, have been having actually been cited to have contravened the Public Procurement and Disposal Act of 2015. A few other issues that are emerging in this uh, in, in the address of the senator was also the question of uh, the urban renewal program that, uh, of course, touches on housing here in Mombasa. There is an ambitious program that the county government, of course, of Mombasa launched uh, to try and change the face of the old estates of Mombasa, give them a new face, and later on give those houses back to the people. That is, uh, this, uh, that is what actually the Senate of Mombasa is, is, has called a scheme to really uh, defraud uh, the people of Mombasa. And he says there is a, a plan actually to uh, ensure that they privatize public property and Mombasa uh, at the end of the day will actually, ha will actually be lacking public houses. That is according to what the Senator claims. And well, uh, Abhi Agina, to take this discussion further, I will be joined, uh, um, I am actually joined here by uh, one of the member of, uh, mem member of County Assembly here in Mombasa is called uh, Mr. Jabez, who is uh, the member, the MCA for Congo Air, to break it down for us and explain to us a few things here and there. Well, welcome, Mweshimiwa, to KTN. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, there are a host of issues that have been raised by the senator, of course, touching on garbage collection. Ideally, this matter sails through the, has to sail through the county assembly before actually Absolutely. it is uh, actually uh, taken forward. Absolutely. Did it pass through uh, your office, uh, your, your assembly, and uh, what action did you take? Did you raise the red flag? Uh, these are some of the very contentious issues uh, which we've questioned the governor. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, and it's true. I can assert that this thing has never come to the floor of the assembly. I personally questioned the governor why uh, are we having such a big tender of a, a billion shillings uh, being done in secrecy. And uh, surprisingly, you know, initially uh, the residents were told that uh, this was like uh, it was charity by some of the a business community. But now eventually we are realizing, uh, I saw one of the voters, somebody was asking for money uh, to be paid. It's when we realized that this thing has actually been given to a supplier and uh, it has never come to the floor of the assembly, even uh, uh, if it is to be given, to be privatized rather. It ought to have gone through PPP. And We've never had uh, any, uh, 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 or rather, enactment on uh, how we would uh, work with the private-public partnerships. Uh, even the existing, you know, national statutes over the same, it has not been adhered to because the law requires that if the county is supposed to partner with any outside entity, including parking, these things should be brought to the assembly, the floor of the assembly. So it's unfortunately uh, things are being done in this manner and, uh, you know. I, ideally, Mwishimiwa, what should happen when uh, the executive appears to be overlooking you, the MCS? It's unfortunate. Uh, uh, you know, that is now the position of the Senate. Uh, I've written, we've written to Senate in many issues, including, let's say now, in Mombasa, uh, the developers can tell you that uh, development plans are not brought before the assembly. This is in line with Article uh, uh, 183 of the County Government Act uh, 20, uh, 2012. Mombasa County does not, uh, the, 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 I don't know, the executive just do their things without bringing them before the assembly for approval, which is wrong. Well, you represent Congo Air and we understand that you represent an area that has one of the largest markets in, in Kenya actually. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about garbage, the set of garbage collection in that particular uh, ward. How is it? Initially, it was very bad. Uh, at one point, uh, together with the help of the current Nyali MP, uh, we had to walk out and be able to seek help from uh, the private community uh, to help us. Uh, in terms of Congo Air, personally, I've got a sponsor who's given us a truck that is assisting uh, uh, one of the trucks from the county government. Surprisingly, um, I, I see county government uh, branded trucks like this one over here. And uh, we're being told that it's a private uh, supplier. So I wonder how this works. 
Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mushimua, for your time. Thank you so much. Well, that has been Mr. Jabez, who is an MCA at uh, Congo Air here in Mombasa. And of course, we are still waiting for the county government of Mombasa. They are saying they are still packaging their response uh, to this allegation that have been raised by the Senate of Mombasa, Hassan Omar Hassan. Back to you, Agina. Well, many thanks, Ntoma. And uh, just before we let you go, of course, uh, we do know that Senator Hassan Omar and uh, the current governor for Mombasa, Ali Hassan Joho, have been um, buddies, if I may say so. Is this a really uh, a genuine issue that is being raised by the senator, or is pure? Is actually pure politics, really? Well, indeed, in the history of uh, the politics of Mombasa, Hassan Omar Hassan and Ali Hassan Joho were actually buddies, uh, especially during the early days of the county governments. But later on, actually, there started to appear clear splits uh, between the two of them. When you speak to the senator of Mombasa, he'll tell you that he's angered by the way the county of government of Mombasa is running affairs in, in Mombasa, and perhaps reason why he broke ranks with uh, Ali Hassan Joho and decided to challenge him. He, say, he has said that he'll be firmly in the race to challenge uh, Ali Hassan Joho in the county elections and he's quite confident that he's going to take uh, to take up the leadership of Mombasa and steer things forward well Hassan, Hassan uh, Ali Joho the governor of, has of course been quite uh, calm on this matter he has not been speaking much on why really they are not together but he is saying that Hassan Omar is still his friend but uh, politically speaking the two are actually facing different directions again Thank you very much, Francis and Tomo. They are coming to us live from Mombasa County. And uh, this particular story has already generated a lot of feedback on social media. And perhaps we'll be able to sample one or two tweets as we move along. But for now, we want to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we still have a lot coming up in regarding sports as well as more political stories. Don't go too far. Welcome back. You're watching KTN News Desk with me, Abi Agena. The National Transport and Safety Authority has launched a major crackdown on road safety during the New Year celebrations, but chose to educate road users on the dangers of breaking the laws while driving. The agency observed that many motorists were ignorant about the laws on traffic. Unlike the past where the offending motorists were charged, this time round, they were left off the hook after being enlightened on their mistakes. The operation led by retired Lieutenant Colonel Harrod Aiden was conducted along Mombasa Malindi Road. Today, today, as I was uh, uh, going home with my family, I decided to use my uh, my vehicle. According to me, the Nissan Matatu, a PSV vehicle. It belongs to me, but uh, I've learned that uh, according to the to the uh, rules or to the law. Uh, I need a special. Uh, I need a special license. Anytime I want to use my my matatu outside, outside the, the area that is uh, is, 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 is been uh, allowed to operate. Uh, today we are operating along Kilifi Malindi Road. Basically, our focus is on speed uh, enforcement, safety belt wearing, random drunk driving test. We are educating the motorists, especially those caught on speeding, on the dangers of speeding. We have had about uh, 18 cases of speeding, and most of them we have resolved through education. Mzidi kukaa katika hii barabara, kwa sababu kuna baadhi ya madereva wengine hawafati sheria, wanaeka speed governor, zao halafu wanaeka switch, wana disconnect, wakisikia NTSA wako, Hata wengine hawana, lakini wanaenda speed ndogo. Sasa naomba NTSA wawe na uangalifu mzuri. Ikiwezekana wasimamishe kila gari, wawe wakitoa data. Moving on, Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkai Seri has thrown his weight behind the candidature of his predecessor at the ministry, Joseph Olilenku. This was after the two leaders who have served in the powerful ministry were reconciled. Olilenku is eyeing the position currently being held by Governor David Olen Kedienye in Kajado County. They should ensure that well, I will go through nomination, and if he does, I want to take 
the opportunity to tell them I will support Lelengu after a nomination. So, secondly, I urge Wanainji to campaign peacefully, to do the very best in the best way that you look for vote in a more peaceful, more respectful way. Well, that's how we wrap up KTN News Desk. Of course, we still have a lot more on KTN News, but for now, that's why we bring the curtains down. My name is Abi Agina. On KTN News, I'll be having an interesting conversation with Gladys Boss Shule as she prepares to launch her gubernatorial bid come this particular elections. Don't go too far.